Today we're talking about the Shanghai stock market, a market that begs the question, if a government owned entity goes public, is it more public? Yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it philosophers. China is currently doing their own Occupy Wall Street, except instead of students, it's the government and instead of occupation, it's occupation. So what is going on? Well, recently we saw Let's take a look at Chinese stocks this after suffering another sharp sell off in that market overnight, Mike. Yeah, I mean, David, even almost without let up, you've seen this drastic underperformance of Chinese stocks. Uh, you had a little bit of relief in September, but that has kind of fallen apart. Yeah, Chinese stocks are not doing spectacularly well recently, which is weird because their companies are working with the best technology researchers can steal. In fact, the nearly relentless declines of recent months have made Chinese equities the world's worst this year in local currency terms. World's worst equities. There isn't a word I could see Tesla sponsoring. So seriously, China, what happened? Well, the problem stems from just the idea of a Chinese company. One would expect that the Venn diagram of things that exist in China and things that are owned by the Chinese government would just be a circle. And this might surprise you, but there exists a pretty big sphere of companies in China that are privately owned. Because if the government were to invest in the majority shareholder in literally every company that was ever created, that would be a problem. Because well, I've seen enough Shark Tank episodes to know that a few ideas in companies, well, they're best left private. Although China, if you want to buy a majority stake and that's all I have to say about that, I'm valuing myself at a quarter of a billion dollars, so go right ahead. Alright, so China has private companies. What's the problem? There has been a debt explosion in China over the past decade. Uh, after the 2008 financial crisis and the stimulus that they used to respond to that, which never really ended. Much like your high school friend who still lives with his parents, China has been non-stop stimulating itself since 2008. And it's in a ton of debt because of that. So still, a ton of government debt clearly isn't good, but it doesn't lead to a stock market collapse. The problem was that Beijing's campaign to reduce debt levels and its crackdown on shadow banking activities were drying up funding for major infrastructure projects. Now all of this might sound like just a random series of unconnected problems, but stick with me. So China in May of this year tried to pursue a concept that was foreign to American politicians, paying down their debt. China's debt is fundamentally different from American debt though, because while there are quite a few private companies China doesn't own, what they do own are the banks, the banks that take cash and make loans to people and companies. And the debt blowing up in China is largely loans by Chinese banks to Chinese companies financed by the Chinese government in order for those companies to pay Chinese employees. Phew, I need a break from saying China so often. Basically, think of it like a conveyor belt of cash that the Chinese government is using to get money to the citizens. The solution was to unleash what economists have called the greatest example of monetary easing in history. An enormous wave of easy loans channeled through the state-owned banking system. In absolute terms, China's total debt has ballooned from around $6 trillion at the time of the financial crisis to nearly $28 trillion by the end of last year. Because of this system, China's stock market is often written off as an unimportant feature of its economic landscape. Companies get far more financing from bank loans than they do from issuing shares. So why are we talking about the stock markets today? I mean, as much fun as it is to talk about insignificant parts of the Chinese economy, it's 2018 and we have bigger fish to fry. Well, as I mentioned earlier, China is trying to cut off companies from government loans. So where do they get the cash? I'll give you a hint, it's not Kickstarter. Back in the good old days, so one year ago, these banks were operated by Chinese Oprahs. You get a loan, and you get a loan, and you get a loan. But with the government tightening up funding for the banks, there are few opportunities for loans to go to companies. This means that banks are investing in the safest companies. To bring this story full circle, this means compared with state owned firms, private companies are struggling to obtain loans because banks see them as riskier. 
Yeah, if you're choosing which company to loan to between the one owned by some guy, who I'm sure is a fine boss, and the company owned by the communist government that governs your country and your bank, well, one company stands out as a safer bet. In order to say, hey, let's get some private industry cooking here, you do have Chinese President Xi Jinping vowing unwavering support for the private sector. Which someone needs to skim the footnotes of the Communist Manifesto again. Now the Chinese government is doing this by that 11% of China's market capitalization is collateral, is put up as a collateral for loans, which is troubling in an environment where the econo economy is deteriorating in China and people may be forced to sell. All right, my brain shut down after the word collateral. This is super important though because China made pretty much the same mistake that America did with houses in 2007. Five years ago, the government made it easier for listed firms to use their shares as collateral. There's that collateral word again. Basically, in China, if you're a private company, you can borrow money from the banks in exchange for some of your company's shares. If you can't tell why this is about to bite the Chinese economy, just watch this clip from 2008. They couldn't do it because the value of the house had fallen below what they owed on the mortgage. They say they can afford the higher payments, but see no point in making them. You know, the housing keeps going down, payments keeps going up. Where's the logic in that? And, uh, and how can we fix it? And if we can't fix it, then w what do we do? Why pay a $3,200 payment on a 1,200 square foot home? It makes no sense. Yeah, if your stocks become worthless, why pay back the money you owe to the government? That is, besides the fact that not angering communist China would be the best strategy for staying appeared. This is no small problem either because currently 11% of the Chinese stock market's capitalization is pledged as collateral on business loans. That is more than $290 billion. Not you on, 290 billion American greenbacks. That's a risk of being defaulted on. So what do you do? I'm not sure if you've noticed, but China isn't exactly one to sit back and see how things play out. The Economist notes, Calling the bottom after share prices plunge is a crapshoot. But in China, the signal is a lot clearer. Just wait for the government to barge in. And wait no longer. The first thing the Chinese government is doing is going on a shopping spree. Because remember how I was talking about paying down the debt? Well, China certainly hopes you don't. In the ensuing market route, deep-pocketed state governments have been taking big stakes in at least 30 troubled private ones. A financing tool intended to help the private sector had, in other words, led to a small wave of nationalizations. It's like when you walk into Costco to save some money but somehow end up leaving with a lifetime supply of Tic Tacs. Based on a true story. On a broader picture though. Uh, in terms of stabilizing the financial market uh, in the next one year or two, uh, I think this is largely a positive sign that a central government will further cut uh, the interest rate or do other monetary easing. Yes, the government is cutting the interest rate and putting more money into the economy so that banks can lend more and wait, isn't that the problem that China set out to fix? It is ridiculous how much Chinese money has been put into keeping these stocks valued. Beyond becoming the majority shareholder in 30 failing companies, which wow, there's a winning government policy if I've ever heard one, they also directed a national team of state-owned banks and asset managers to buy more than $200 billion in shares. And 11 government-owned brokerages are creating a 100 billion yuan asset management plan to buy some of the stocks sitting as collateral. I mean, come on China, leave some stocks for the rest of us. It might sound like the government has all of this sorted out, but there is one problem still unaddressed. The underlying one. Private enterprises still lack a permanent source of funding beyond getting bought by the government. So this might be less solving the problem and more using duct tape to fix a leaky dam. This brings us to the final point. Why Americans should care. Two words. Buenos Aires. They won't let us own our businesses, and they won't give licenses. They've got a lot. Our asks are on the table. Uh, I'd love to see them respond. Uh, thus far, they haven't. The two presidents will uh, meet uh, for a bit in uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina at the G20. 
I know I haven't mentioned the trade war yet, but it's definitely having an impact on slowing the Chinese economy and making people think, maybe now isn't the right time to be buying Chinese stocks. Much like punching someone with cancer, it's not a very significant knock on the overall health of the Chinese economy, but it's very high profile and definitely isn't helping recovery. Pessimism about American tariffs have weighed heavily on sentiment. The more stocks sell off, the more serious the damage from the trade war seems to be. Now, there's a lot we don't know right now about the future. In fact, by virtue of the fact that I'm a mere mortal, I know almost nothing about the future. All I can say is Trump and Xi are meeting in late November as of now, and the US seems to be entering the negotiations with the upper hand. So who knows, maybe for Thanksgiving dinner I'll be eating my foot, a meal I would gladly devour. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.